Hello, once again, everyone. As you can probably see, my accommodations right now are currently looking a little different than probably what you're used to. And my lighting is uh, not so great, so hopefully things look okay. If I have to, I'll, I got a sort of a flashlight that I'm using right now that I'm, I can probably move around so we can see things a little better. So I just, just please bear with me for the time being. I will probably work on getting things a little bit better. I guess it would have been nice if I would have finished those softbox that project I was working on before I moved, but things are kind of still kind of like in transition and stuff. So got to make do with what I got, I guess. So anyway, what I've got here today, it's this uh, DB power. It's an AO9 as a jump starter. And it's also like a, like a portable battery pack. And it's the king of power beyond your limits. It's printed on the box. It's gotta be. What is this? Well, it's a, it's a jump starter for one. And actually, as we can see right there, we've got two ports. We have uh, two USB ports. One of them is just a 5 volt 2.1 amp output. The other one has a, it supports up to quick charge 3.0. It also has a type C that's both an in and an output. So you can charge the unit through that port or you could charge something else, you know, out from that port. And then on the side here, we have this little door that actually opens up. And that's where we plug in our alligator clips to if you have to jumpstart a car. Uh, if you just do like a quick search for this thing online, it seems like it might be a good unit. And I see it, it said it seems like it might be a good unit because <laughs> my luck just does not let me down, man. So I bought this from a, a local store and I got it for $49.95, you know, well, plus taxes, of course. And I just kind of, you know, I saw it sitting there on the shelf and I just decided to quickly look it up on my phone and I said, uh, okay, well, it looks okay. I'm going to give it a shot. Also support like, you know, my local like little independent retailer and the guy's pretty cool. So I thought, you know, okay, okay, I'll pick it up. Okay, so as it turns out, things did not go as smoothly as I was hoping, but I'm gonna leave you in a little bit of suspense right there. So let's let's just take a look and see what's in the box. Not really an unboxing or anything like that. This is it's just my experience with this thing. So as you can see here, I got my original receipt and a uh, total was 7031 because I had to buy some other parts and stuff. But as you can see right there, $49.95, I bought this on the 15th of August of this year. There's the micro, not the micro, the USB type C adapter that comes with it. So you can charge it. So it comes with that. It does not come with an actual power adapter because they're expecting you to use, you know, whatever you already have. You probably already have like a bunch anyway. So they figured, well, why include one? And here's the adapter with the alligator clips. It's supposed to be a 10,800 milliamp hour, 500 amp. And it tells you right here for petrol engine below 3.0 liters or diesel up to 2.0. So, I mean, the instructions are not bad. They're, they're pretty okay. There's a, there are a few things here though that I'm gonna point out and I'll show you why, but we'll take a look at this in a second. And here is the actual battery pack. It's not super heavy. It's not like too light either. It just seems kind of between. I was actually expecting it to be like maybe a little bit heavier. It actually, it doesn't feel bad. It's got like that texture, not texture, but like sort of like a rubbery coating on it, which actually feels nice. It's not bad. In the back here, it's got a flashlight. There is the main power button on the side. So you can see off and on and input output. So it's exactly what we saw on the box. There's a button here. You can push this when this switch is on and it'll show you like the current, you know, battery status. So right now it's showing like two, I don't know. So maybe like 50% charged when this is charging, these lights are, you know, like blinking and, and turn like say it was like you know down like fully discharged and then this one would start blinking and then after you know it's like that percentage is done it just kind of goes up from there until it's fully charged and then the lights are just fully on so why are we taking a look at this well as i said due to my for some reason seemingly endless streak of bad luck i bought this thing the only one that was on the shelf and it's got issues so issue number one this output here, or this USB port, doesn't seem to work like at all. This one seems to work just fine, but this one just doesn't seem to output like nothing. You hit the, the power switch to on, you push this button, and that turns these outputs on. I think this one as well, but I'm not entirely sure. See, if we look at the instructions here on charging phones and tablets, it shows you that one, you plug in your cable, you know, and then you hit the power button right there, number two. So that's how it would work. Another thing here in the instructions, how to use the LED flashlight. You long press this button for three seconds to turn on high mode or steady on. All right, let's see if that works. 
So I'm going to power up the unit. The power is on. You can see we got the LEDs on there. And if I hit the button here for like a long press. Okay, it's been more than three seconds. No light. If I turn the switch off, let's hit this power button for three seconds. All right, it's been at least three seconds. It doesn't work. So, flashlight doesn't work, and this port doesn't work. And are they related? I have no idea. So I could have easily just taken this thing back, you know, and gotten it exchanged or refund or whatever, but I thought it'd be more fun to actually open it up, see what's inside, see if maybe we can figure out why these two don't work, and, you know, just kind of generally ex explore the thing. It gives me a good reason to, I mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> my bad luck, your entertainment, I guess, once again. I have no idea if the jump start port works. I have not tried it. I have not needed to. You know, I kind of figured oh, it would be nice to have one of these things. You know, if I do need a jump start, at least I would have it on hand. You could just like leave this plugged into like a USB port in the car. And I've been kind of taking it around with me anyways, because I've been using it to, you know, keep my, like, my phone charged when I need to, especially since I've been like kind of traveling because the whole move process isn't quite done yet. So it, it has come in handy. I'm not going to say that it has not been useful. And it's you know provided quite a few charges, even though I've only been able to use this one here. But it has been useful, so I'll give it at least that. But with all that said, let's go ahead and try to open it up. We should have some screws here. We looks like we've got some rubber caps covering up these holes. So if I just kind of like prop these out, looks like we should have some access to opening this up without having to like pry the edges or anything. Because I think if I, yeah, if I did pry it, you know, it's going to like destroy that, that finish on it. So let me get some tools and we shall take a look inside. Whoops. Oh, and it goes and it just went flying. Well, that's great. It's somewhere in here. Oh, actually it just fell right next to me. So, all right. So that's what that is. It's just like a little rubber cap. And they do have like a little notch on the end here. So they are sort of like... They're kind of like direction, like, you know, they, they should have like one that goes here and one that goes here. So these two are going to be identical, but the ones on the other side are going to be different. So we do have like a right and a left position one. All right, I've got all four screws loosened up. Let's just dump them out right here where we're not going to lose them, hopefully. It looks like this piece is actually part of this bottom piece. So this cover up here looks like it should be the one that comes off. All right, we probably shouldn't try this at home, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a blade and try to stick it in here and gently pry up on that edge to try to separate it from the bottom piece because I have a feeling what, what this is, is this probably has sort of like little clips right here that are probably like, you know, being held on in this way. So we have to like pull them out to be able to lift this side up. All right, I had to kind of jam it in there a bit, but it is coming apart. Okay, it looks like we might have something here in the middle as well. So I'm gonna try to separate it from this edge and then from the other side. All right, there we go. So I had to Basically like stick it in and go this way, like pry up in that direction so that this face would get pulled apart and then it released that, that top section. Okay, there they are. See, they actually, they're not how I thought they were. I thought they would be inwards. They're actually like facing outwards this way. So, okay, there it goes. I got the rest of it apart. And looks like I broke these clips in the process. So. Oh well, I guess. So there's our batteries. And I guess maybe, uh, well, they're sealed in like some shrink wrap. So any markings on them are probably gonna be covered up. There is the board. But we also got a couple screws. Actually, there's three, one, two, three right there holding this board down. Let's see if we can just get this out. Okay, that comes out. All right. There's the that's the lens for the for the LED on the flashlight, or what's supposed to be for the flashlight. All right, so, I mean, we do have the LED right there. That is the cover for the power switch. And, okay, I see. So we have a connector right here with four wires 
coming in for the board and for power for the USB and the flashlight. It also looks like maybe we've got like some center tapping or something there. It could be, I don't know, it also could be for temperature. But then we have the, the big gauge wires going directly to that connector where the jumper cables plug into. It's like there is a board in here. Although I don't know if it actually contains any components to prevent, you know, if, if something shorts it out here that it cuts it off. It doesn't look like it's got very many components on it. But for now, let's go ahead and unplug this. And the whole thing wants to come off. <laughs> okay, come on, separate from the plastic. There we go. All right, just push that back down. So there's the board. We might, we'll zoom in on that a little bit better, but for now, so we've got a lot of, all these looks like MOSFETs and stuff up here because they have like a bunch of the traces that are connected together. So we've got another, uh, maybe a charge regulator chip or something right there. Got some other device right here and I can't tell what that is either at the moment. We have another unpopulated connector right there. I don't know what that would have been for. Okay, I thought I would try something just for kicks and it didn't really do anything at the moment. But the switch is off here and I turn the switch on. I plug the this connector back on, but if I push the button, nothing happens. It doesn't even give me like a battery status there. So I'm wondering if it, once you plug this board back in, it's basically gotta be reset by being plugged into a charger again. So I'm gonna plug in the USB-C cable here. And I'm actually gonna plug this into another <laughs> portable battery. Portable batteries powering portable batteries. Portable packs powering portable packs. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna hit the power button on this one here, so now it's on. Okay, so as you can see here, it, now it's it's flashing the, the third one there, meaning that you know I had about that much of a charge. When I first unplugged it, it was like on the second one. But now, I guess that should have basically reset the circuitry there, so now it's gonna be acting like, a, like it normally was, although I kind of doubt that the flashlight's gonna work, so let's try it. I'm gonna hold it down for about three seconds. And still does nothing. So, okay. So whatever is not working is still not working. If we push down on anything, would anything happen? Some of these components. Hmm. Nope. Okay, I took the cells out of the package and let's just take a look in here real quick and see what's in there. It turns out that it's three cells. So there would be like, you know, like a 3.6 volt cells each and then the positive of like one, you know, they're all they're all in series and then we have the, the negative the other side. So these, so and then in this connector we have, you know, our positive, our negative and then the terminals between batteries. Let's see if we can peel this tape off and take a look underneath. Okay, so they've got layered tape and they also have a layer capped on there. And there we can see some of the terminals and it looks like, no, nope, there's really nothing else in there to provide. Nope, that board there is just to solder the terminals too. So there's really like no other protection on this. But I mean, this is all covered up. So you wouldn't expect anything, I guess, to, you know, directly short out that connector right there. Because if you short that out, you basically, you're shorting out the cells directly. All right, let's put this back on before I somehow screw it up even worse. Again, a bit of an apology for the bad lighting, but this is kind of what I have to work with now, so just kind of bear with me. But I think I found the reason why the flashlight and that one particular USB port don't work. As you can see right here, the positive of both the LED and that USB port are both part of the same trace. But that positive goes through that choke right there, the one that's marked 6R8. And it goes to this side right there. Looks like we've got a diode. This device marked uh, 2003. I'd have to look that up. I don't know what it is off the top of my head or anything. But I think it's probably going to be like a dual MOSFET or something. If there's no power on this side, you know, this could explain it. Uh, it may not necessarily be this device, you know, that has a problem. It could be like something down the line. But, I mean, that kind of explains why those two both don't work. The negative side of the LED is right there at that point. It looks like there's a via there. And we can see we've got some other like MOSFETs and stuff right here. 
we also got those little tiny devices there that the soldering on that one especially with that one right there right next to that 0.01 ohm resistor right there the soldering doesn't look very great this one right here looks a little crooked like it didn't go on straight i mean not that that's a big deal as long as it's making proper contact there's a power switch there's one of the chips this one says uh south chip it's an sc eight eight zero four zero d e r i think another 0.02 ohm resistor bunch of little tiny stuff right there got some more possibly mosfets right there those are r u four o i something <laughs> i'd have to look at them um, with a lens by myself i can't really quite tell and that there says 82s 4aa boy that was really weird so i had the multimeter out and i got my my probes here and i was about to start measuring some voltages well i was ex going to explain it first but i just happened to touch the positive to the positive terminal right here of the usb port the one that i have this cable connected to and the camera shut off what I did here is I've got a USB connector or a USB cable hooked up and I'm just going to use it to charge up this other flashlight and that way it'll keep power on because the thing is that if there is no power draw on the USB port then the unit shuts off. So I'm going to go ahead and power this up or actually it was already on right there. I'm going to hit the button and okay the flashlight is charging you can see we've got a red LED over here so that's getting power one thing i noticed is with the quick charge port on this once the battery in on the phone like hits a certain level i think it was like 89 percent or whatever and i guess it the current consumption the current consumption drops this shuts off because i guess it thinks that you know it's it's done or whatever so it's it's a little bit annoying because anytime i try to use this to charge the phone it it once it gets to that point I have to manually like push the power button on this to get keep it charging a little bit more. So that's the only annoyance I've found so far, other than the other two things not working. But anyways, so the okay, see, it turned off. I guess because the flashlight doesn't draw enough power either. Charging, see right there, it's on. We'll give it a sec. Let me pull this closer right there so you can actually see it. See the red LEDs on because it's charging. See how long it takes before it shuts off. Okay, I guess maybe now it's it's not going to shut off. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, let's measure the voltage right here at the 3.0 port, and we have 5.074. Just you know, that's kind of what we'd expect. We'd expect to see five volts. At the second USB port, we have nothing, or 0.301 <laughs> oh okay see the thing just shut off so that's the only noise i was talking about there we go i just hit the button it takes a little while for these leds to shut off it just turns off the usb port before the leds in the front actually turn off i really should look up what this component is because if i don't know what this component is i don't know exactly what it's trying to do so i'm going to look that up and see if i can find it real quick and then we'll continue like kind of messing around in there and see what we can find I try to find some information on that I see right there and at first I think I mentioned that I thought maybe it was like a MOSFET or something but the more I look at it the more it looks like it's actually a switching regulator and this is why so that chip is marked 2003 and it doesn't have like any letters or anything like preceding the the number so I've been having kind of a hard time trying to find any information on this but the way it's wired is we have 12 volts coming in from the battery pack at pin number two Pin number three is the one that's being or supposed to be switched, and that provides supposed to provide the five volts for the LED, the positive side of the LED, and the voltage output to the USB. And then it has some cap some capacitors right there at the output, you know, for like filtering and stuff. So that's uh, kind of expected. Pin number four appears to be ground, so that looks like it's grounded directly. And then pin number five looks like a feedback pin coming from the voltage output because it, there's a trace that kind of goes all the way around it's got a voltage divider and then like a little bit of capacitance right there so that looks like a feedback pin pin number six i'm not entirely sure what it's doing it looks like it comes out it goes to two capacitors but one of the capacitors has a resistor to ground and then the other one's grounded directly 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is how it actually is in circuit because I can't, you know, like tell what's underneath some stuff, but just from like ohming it out, that's kind of what it looks like. This could be wrong. So, and then, so pin number, that would be pin number seven. That looks like it's an enable from the microcontroller. And I already checked this. I checked the voltage coming into this pin. And when you click the button, five volts is present at this pin. So that looks like it's working properly. And then pin number eight, uh, looks like it's just going to a capacitor, capacitor to ground. So I don't know if that's just for some sort of stability of something inside of this thing or what, not entirely sure. Oh, and then pin number one has a capacitor going to there. So I don't know if that's for like some sort of compensation or something. So I'm still trying to figure out what exactly this chip is, but it, I mean, you could tell that right away that it just looks like it's some sort of a switching regulator. Since we know that this is probably a switching regulator and we're not getting any 5 volt output at this point, but the microcontroller is providing a signal, I'm wondering what would happen if I click the power button and I jump the 5 volts that comes out to the, the one that is working to this port, jump it straight across to here to provide 5 volt power to the LED. If I click that button for three seconds, will the LED turn on? I don't know, but I think judging by or you know like going by how the rest of this is wired maybe it will work so i'm just going to use these tweezers to jump directly from the output of that choke to the positive on the led and i'll hold it down for three seconds and we'll see if the led powers up so here we go three up oh, it's working let's hold on the led for a few more seconds and see if it starts flashing oh there it goes <laughs> what do you know yep so yeah, so it's looking like there's something up with that. I'm just pushing the button there like a few times just to try to see what happens. All right, so nothing wrong with the LED circuit that, or the circuit that controls the actual LED. What's wrong is something with this regulator. I guess worst case scenario, what I could do is just jump a line <laughs> straight from here to here. Although I would, I mean, I would rather not do that just because this is you know, like meant to be like its own circuit on this side. And so it looks like these two are pretty much like individually controlled. So if there's nothing going on on this side, you know, then the microcontroller basically just shuts off uh, all functionality to that. So it's not wasting any sort of power. Well, I searched and I searched and I searched trying to find some information on this chip and I can't find anything. I even tried like flowing some of these pins just to see if maybe something was loose because it's looking like it, that is the problem. I mean, everything else seems like it's totally fine. It's just that chip's not, not doing anything for whatever reason. Word of caution is don't use hot air around these LEDs with this uh, sort of like little dome bubble top. They will melt as I accidentally happened to find out on my own. I mean, not that I was trying to like purposely blast that, but yeah, just from the hot air around it, it kind of melted that dome a little bit. Well, since we can't really do much about this, I mean, I am going to leave this thing intact because like I said, I, this has been coming in handy and this port not working or the flashlight not working doesn't really affect the functionality of the, you know, like the batteries, like that, the whole starter thing. So, I mean, at least it could still be used for that. So whatever, not too, I'm not really going to complain too much about, about that. But since we're already in here and we've turned this into a pretty much just a teardown and obviously I'm not going to be able to change that chip if I can't figure out what it is. So let's just find out and see what these cells are actually rated at, if it's printed on them at all, or you know, maybe like a model number or something. So the pack claims that it's a 10,800 milliamp hour pack, but we'll see what these cells actually say. Now I gotta be careful here not to puncture the actual lithium. So I would hate for that to go up in smoke. Gotta get this little bit off here so I can fully peel this off. And there we go. 17, I don't know what that's anything, or like a serial number or something. Oh, there we go. Here we go, we have a model number, battery model number. So it says LPB 656578ST, and there's our date code, 2017-1011. So they're not too old, so you can see we got three of them and they're pretty thick. Okay, well, unfortunately, this number brings up absolutely nothing. This I'm just gonna put back together with some Kapton like wrapped around it, and then these can basically just hold this stuff down. So I'm just gonna put some Kapton down here just to keep this plastic from 
coming off and you know just providing a little bit extra protection and that of course did not go underneath the plastic so boo all right since we've kind of got that out of the way see th this is the module that you plug in to jump start a car so you would just plug this into that connector there and I mean there's no problems with this thing working by itself because it has nothing to do with the rest of the circuitry this is just kind of like a standalone thing and as long as you know there's power here because these batteries you know are, are getting charged that the jump start function will work so let's open this up and see what's inside of that as you can see it's it's quite large so it looks like there's just the one screw down here on the bottom so that should just come off maybe this thing kind of like hinges open or something I'm not entirely sure okay so this sort is clipped too but this one comes off easier so wow not a whole lot I mean there's a little button right there this is like a boost button so if you need a little bit extra current I think that's when you push that okay there it goes oh wow there's actually a relay in here that's a fairly chunky relay Let's see what are the specs on that it's coil 12 volts 70 amp 14 volt DC wow there's actually way more circuitry in here than I thought there was gonna be and I kind of bent that LED up a little bit so I'm just gonna bend it back down so the positive actually goes through this relay and it looks like it comes into here but it doesn't there's no direct contact to the to the jumper lead probably I'm guessing maybe it's doing some voltage sensing and if it detects that it's uh, incorrect polarity it you know gives you an error because this is a it's a dual color LED as we saw and the instructions did say something about that Let's see if I can find it real quick okay that doesn't really say much about it it just says that the indicator light will turn into green so it'll be like a solid green once you've got it connected properly and if it says if it still flashes red and green then you press the long boost or the boost button for three seconds but yeah, so, but I think that's what it's doing. I think it's doing some voltage sensing before it actually turns this relay on because you wouldn't want to have the full charge of the batteries, you know, like being present at these and then you accidentally, sh I mean, you can't really short them like this, but you know, I don't know if you're being dumb enough to do this, something like that, then you're just gonna basically provide a direct short across the, the battery terminals and that wouldn't be good. One little complaint about this, and I mean, I guess it's not too big of a deal, but the the, little hinges right here they're just you know they're just plastic so the weakest point would probably be on this side right there yeah as you can see like the plastic is it's fairly thin so if anything broke it looks like it would be right there there's an opto isolator right here so that's probably what's being used for detecting the the voltage i would think i mean i'm not going to go through and like reverse engineer this whole thing i'm just kind of taking a quick look at it but that's my guess that that's probably what that's doing there is a tiny little thermistor looking thing right here. You can see it's got its leads coming up and they're soldered onto that point right there. So they might be maybe monitoring the the um, temperature of like this cable right here. And maybe that's why this is like sort of separate to sort of provide kind of like a resistance or something. And then if that gets starts getting a little too hot, then it knows to cut off the, the relay or something. I mean, that's just my guess. It says nothing about this in the instruction manual. And then the microcontroller here, it's a Holtec, it's an HT66F0172. So yeah, a lot of electronics inside of this little protection thing. I was just expecting, I've seen some other ones that basically all they are is like a bank of MOSFETs or a bank of like high current diodes, but this one actually has a little bit more going on. So there we go. That was a teardown of this DB Power A09 jump starter and battery pack. It's not like the fanciest thing out there, and the circuit board, I mean, it, it looks pretty okay. I'm pretty sure there's like <laughs> worse units out there. The What really surprised me was for sure the the jumper little controller here. That's uh, got quite a bit more going on than I was expecting. In the meantime, since, uh, you know, it does work, and I can at least use the, the one port, and, you know, the jump start function should be working. If this isn't working, then, you know, it's kind of kind of pointless but and I mean it's not like I've had to use it anyways it's just it's it's just nice to, to have that option but I'm just gonna put it back together and you know just uh, keep it how it is so thanks guys for watching I'll see you guys around the bench and if anybody by some far off chance happens to know what this chip is supposed to be you know it's marked 2003 and that's it and you know do let me know
it would be nice to get this side working and you know maybe the flashlight too even though it's not critical because you most of the time i just use something else but i mean if it's there might as well make it useful i guess i could you know like remove this chip and maybe the other stuff that you know goes to that chip and just replace it with some other little switch in ic that you know would basically do the same function because this one here is only five volts one thing i forgot about is the fact that the quick charge you know can use up to nine volts and so if i were to plug in nine volts into the rest of this you know i'd probably end up like you know frying that led or you know if something out here is uh, just regular usb voltage you know five volts and i would fry that so i wouldn't want to jump that directly just for that reason I would want to just have this like, you know, be its own like standalone circuit.